Some big news has dropped in the last week. Neo Fetch, the command line utility that retrieves system information, is being deprecated and discontinued, which is personal to me because I've used it in almost every single review I've done on the channel over the past four years. We're going to talk about what happened here, as you can see me using it here on many, many Linux distributions. If you're interested in a distribution, I have most of the popular ones. Over the years, I've built a catalog up, and NeoFetch has been a star in some of those videos. For those of you who are unfamiliar with NeoFetch, it's a great tool that helps you gather system information, including kernel versions, CPU, GPU, memory usage. It's great for us Linux enthusiasts to get some information real quick, easily, and it's also customizable. We're going to get into how and what alternatives we can use for this, but let's take a second to pay our dues. This news does not really come as a surprise. On April 26, 2024, the project for NeoFetch became a public archive and is now read-only, meaning the developer is not going to create any more commits or make any changes to the release of NeoFetch. So what does that mean for us? Well, we're not going to get any new fixes and updates. And you might be asking, why does that really matter? Well, as new distros come out that use different packaging systems, dependencies, libraries, so on and so forth, and as newer and newer systems get developed, there might be an off chance where there needs to be some patching done. Well, if the project doesn't exist, unless there is a fork off, which we're going to talk about soon, it really creates a problem for those of us using NeoFetch. So this wasn't really abrupt. NeoFetch hasn't really been contributed to in over three years. This is Dylan Arap's project, who is a self-taught creator of KISS Linux, who's done a fantastic job giving us a tool that's probably been used over millions of systems and completely written in Bash 3.2. With a minimalistic and beautiful styling capability, it has far outlived many of its challengers when displaying system information. So why did Dylan decide to deprecate and discontinue the popular command line utility for displaying Linux system information? Well, it says right here, Dylan has taken up farming, which is quite interesting. Whether or not they actually took up farming, I think this is just a way to say they're done programming. Who knows if it's farming some cryptocurrency or actually outside touching grass. Regardless, they will be missed. I think some thanks in the chat would be great for all the work Dylan has done for us in previous years, including making Pywall, which is an awesome utility that a lot of people have used to generate color schemes on the fly. But they've done a lot of great work for the Linux community. Not only NeoFetch, Pywall, but also PFetch. They will be missed and wishing them the best because this indicates an end of an era in the development of NeoFetch. Now, it's not necessarily surprising that NeoFetch got publicly archived, but it is interesting that all the other sourced works that Dylan was working on are also publicly archived. As we go through the years, we can see what Dylan was working on. The only contributions made for this year are the 17 contributions to publicly archive their packages. In 2023, there was really only one contribution on June 8th. 2022, really nothing. 2021, a ton of contributions, mainly in July. 2020, an incredible amount. 2019, again, incredible, and so on and so forth through the years. With almost a decade of programming, I'm wishing Dylan the best for his contributions to Linux and the open source community. I want to talk about some alternatives. Let's go check out something else, the NeoFetch. Now, even though I have nostalgia and a sentiment using NeoFetch, just because it was one of the first tools that I used over a decade ago, after installing Linux for the first time, there are various different alternatives. So if we want an alternative, I'm going to suggest ScreenFetch because, well, it's very similar, but it's also available in the source repositories of Ubuntu and the likes. So you can do sudo apt install ScreenFetch and then just press enter. And after it's installed, very simply just run screen fetch. Now it actually takes a moment to spit things out, but here we go. Looks very, very similar, has very similar capabilities. And why did I choose screen fetch over another alternative? For example, like fast fetch, which is a C based, really performant version. That's very similar to Neo fetch. Well, that's because we don't necessarily have source repos for this. So you can't install it directly from the terminal without adding a PPA. As you can tell here, we'd have to add Zang Song's CUI 3371 for FastFetch. Now it is available on some other distributions. If you got Arch Linux, I suggest FastFetch, Fedora, Gentoo, Alpine, NixOS, OpenSUSE, and Alt Linux. 
This is a great port itself. If you go down to the bottom, you will see the packaging and repositories that it does belong to. Check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. And what's something interesting is a lot of people are going to fast fetch. How can you tell? Well, here's what it, the star ratings were in 2022 and 23. In 2024, the star ratings here at the beginning of the year were right at 1,900 stars. And after this news broke, you can see this exponential curve go up you know, right about here. And now we're close to around 3,800 to 4 K stars. So you can definitely tell people are making the fast switch over to, to fast fetch. If you do want the ability to add it to your system, I'm going to show you how here as well. We first have to run this command right here. So if you have an Ubuntu based Linux distribution, you can add a repository. According to this, it's PPA colon Zhang song Chewy 3371. And that's fast fetch. Of course, I misspelled repository Add in an extra S here. Anyways, once you have that fixed, you can press enter to continue. That's going to add that repo in. Always make sure after you've ran an add repo command to do sudo apt update. That's going to make sure to add in that repo so you can install stuff from it. Anyways, we can now do sudo apt install and we just do fast fetch. Once things are done here, we can use it. Just do fast fetch and you'll see just how similar it is to screen fetch. Again, this is the one I will suggest using if you're capable and willing to try installing it. It's really optimized to be fast and it has a bunch of the features that NeoFetch had, not just displaying system information, but making sure it was done in a, in a pretty way with awesome configuration. Let me show you what I mean. If you weren't familiar with the fact that you can configure NeoFetch, you can. There's a breakdown of customizing information, including the terminal image that is displayed. So for example, if you hit customizing information, you can see all the various things you could have customized, including printing your own information, changing colors out, removing information that you saw unnecessary, rearranging it, and even come up with more complex info. Now, what was also awesome was you could change the images inside the background on the left-hand side, including using an image backend. As you can tell here, depending on what you wanted to display it in, there was ASCII characters, CASA, CAD image, iTerm2, JP2A, PixTerm, Sixel, TieCat, W3M, off, and so on and so forth. And if you really want to get creative, you can even do a waifu crop. What is that? Well, you can take your wallpaper of your favorite waifu and crop or fit it directly into your terminal. That way you can see it every single time you run NeoFetch, whether or not that is directly with the start of a terminal. Anyways, I'm running it one last time because in the future, I'll more than likely move on from NeoFetch. Dylan, thanks for all your hard work. Good luck on the farming, and I'll catch you all on in a different video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux, and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.